Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Bronte Mania. In this video I am going to take a look at one of uh, Bramwell Bronte's poems. He actually wrote a series of poems entitled Caroline in the 1840s and this is one of those poems. It's not the whole poem because it's quite a long one so it's going to be an actual extract of this poem. I'll read the poem first and then I will uh, analyse after that. So this is the poem, this is uh, Caroline um, and this is how it goes. Um, I stooped to pluck a rose that grew beside this window waving there but back my little hand withdrew from some reproof of inward pain for she who loved it was not there to check me with her dove-like eye, and something bid my heart forbear the favourite rosebud to destroy. Was it that bell, that funeral bell, sullenly sounding on the wind? Was it that melancholy nail which first to sorrow woke my mind? I looked upon my mourning dress till my heart beat with childish fear, and frightened at my loneliness, I watched some well-known sound to hear, but all without lay silent in the sunny hush of afternoon, and only muffled steps within passed slowly and sedately on. There lay she then, as now she lies, for not a limb has moved since then. In dreamless slumber closed those eyes that never more might wake again. She lay as I had seen her lie on many a happy night before, when I was humbly kneeling by, whom she was teaching to adore, who oh, just as when by her I prayed, and she to heaven sent up my prayer. She lay with flower about her head, though formal grave clothes hid her hair. Still did her lips the smile retain, which parted them when hope was high. Still seemed her brow as smooth from pain, as when all thought she could not die. And and though her bed looked cramped and strange, her, her too bright cheek all faded now, my young eyes scarcely saw a change from hours when moonlight paled her brow. And yet I felt and scarce could speak, a chilly face, a faltering breath. When my hand touched the marble cheek, which lay so passively beneath, and thus it brought me back the hours, when we at rest together, used to lie listening to the showers of wild December weather, which, which when, as oft, they woke in her, the chords of inward thought, would fill with pictures that world air, from far off memories brought. So, while I lay, I heard again, her silver sounding tongue, rehearsing some remembered strain, of old times long ago. So that's that um, extract from the poem of Caroline. Um, I'd like now to um, delve into the analysis of this poem. And uh, really, Ed Bramwell is, this is actually, um, I believe, and a lot of people believe that Bramwell, looking back at his sister Maria, who died in childhood, um, and he really was quite um, heartbroken when she died and it left a big impression on him. Um, so in this, it, this poem, Branwell is reminded of his dear sister Maria when trying to possess a rose as this was her favourite flower. This clearly occurs shortly after her death as the reference is made to his little hand. He hears a funeral bell tolling which reminds him of his sister's passing which opens up much emotional turmoil in his mind. Looking down, he sees his mourning dress, the very clothes he wore at Maria's funeral. As a feeling of wretched loneliness comes over the boy, he pines for the sound of his sister's footsteps, but they are nowhere to be found. He describes his sister's final resting place with touching reverence. The lines in dreamless slumber closed those eyes that never more might wake again, evokes her state of eternal rest. He compares a deathly pose to a much happier time in his childish heart. 
She was lying back while Bramwell humbly knelt by her side. They would pray together, the boy uttering his plaintive thoughts to the Almighty. Well, she to heaven sent up my prayer. This points to, to the devoutness of Maria. She was known within the family as a deeply spiritual girl, and this is borne out in these words. But Bramwell cannot stay long in his happy recollection of former times. He returns to her death tomb with a flower about her head, though formal grave clothes hid her hair. However, death could not have the final victory over this brave girl, but a smile remained on her sweet face. When he touches her marble cheek, he remembers the good times again, how they used to lie together as they listened to the showers of wild December weather. This evoked in Maria the chords of inward thought, which gives the indication that she possessed a lilting singing voice which could give substance to what was residing in her mind. Bramwell tells us how Maria would fill with pictures that wild air which shows that the girl was not only descriptive but was energised in the way she expressed her inward thought. The final lines are quite haunting. Branwell, as a boy, has returned to the present and is lying down just as when his sister was alive and with, her, and with him in body and spirit. In so doing, he is able to hear once more her silver-sounding tone. She is singing some remembered strain, memorable to Branwell from the old times when they were together, which, alas, are long gone now. In summing up, this is a heartfelt poem from Branwell which explains the love he felt for his lost sister Maria. It explains perfectly how important she was to him growing up, and how his sense of loss at her passing stayed with him into adulthood. Indeed, I believe this feeling of emptiness stayed with him right up to his dying day. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'll look at um, Bram, one of Bramwell's Caroline poems. Um, I enjoy delving into it and bringing in some detail and a little bit of insight as well and i hope you've enjoyed that um don't forget um at the end of this video if you like the content of this channel please um subscribe to it if you would like and i look forward very much to uh, meeting with you again very soon thank you very much bye